Hello and welcome to today's video which is about advanced aerodynamics. In this video we're gonna watch exactly how I myself learn about how to create really aerodynamic space planes. I didn't watch any tutorials or any of the anything of the sort. I just uh, kind of found everything out myself. So here I'm trying to make a simple space plane that can take to orange to fuel orange fuel tanks up to orbit and uh, <laughs> I'm uh, using as attachment points small uh, the small nose cones aerodynamic nose cones to attach the rapiers and I'm uh, I'm putting making those engine clusters and I'm using two of them in order to get this space plane to orbit. At that point it didn't have uh, a name but later iterations of it uh, were called by me Phoenix. This is just a test rig right now just making something and testing it to see if it works. No biggie. Uh, it's pretty simple, as you can see. Uh, command module for the kerbals, a fuel tank and, uh, and the space for the cargo. Oh, I'm also putting uh, those two engine clusters because I needed more nuclear engines. For the vacuum of space. Putting in some gears. And... Uh, It's mostly ready. What happens after the launch is the interesting part here and uh, the one that, that we can learn things about. It. We can learn useful things about how to make a craft work inside an atmosphere. This is just the first iteration and you'll see what happens with it in uh, just a few seconds. Ah, I'm auto strutting thing stuff here and away we go. So after an uneventful launch, I'm trying to accelerate through the atmosphere. And things uh, seem to be going well until I hit uh, the sound barrier. At that point, uh, the craft simply refused to accelerate, even though I had a thrust away ratio of uh, 1.5. As you can see, uh, there were multiple drag vectors from the engine clusters from each and every engine and uh, pretty long ones. The, the drag was really bad and it was uh, focused there on the engine, on the main engine clusters. So uh, I had to fix that somehow and that's exactly what I did. 
after having identified where the problem area of the craft was, I went back to the hangar and uh, tried to use fairings to elevate the problem, to correct the problem. At this stage I was still experimenting, so uh, yeah, I just made an experiment on the first attempt. Spoiler alert, it's not going to be very useful as it is right now. Yeah, I'm putting everything back and... Putting the engines and launching. Now we, here we go again. Is this fairing going to help aerodynamics behind it? That was the theory at that point. Or at least, let's do it and see if it works, kind of thing. And guess what? It didn't. It didn't. It was too far from the problematic spots to be able to do anything positive. We probably added to the drag then, reducing it. You can still see the same drag vectors coming out and the result is exactly the same. We can't punch through sound speed. At this stage I had a cunning plan. I was going to modify the fairing in order to envelop the whole engine cluster. So I recreated the fairing carefully around it. Actually, I did it a bit long in retrospect. Yet it seemed alright. I was still experimenting. I wasn't certain of the outcome at this point. Yeah, because I, w I thought I was gonna mess up with the engines even more. <laughs> I put the gears elsewhere. <laughs> so, this is just a test mule still. So I just put uh, an aerodynamic nose cone up in front of the unicorn's horn. <laughs> And send it to fly. At first you don't get it. You don't get any difference at all. But once you watch the aerodynamic forces, you can see that the multiple drag vectors have magically disappeared. There's just a single one and that's by the fairing itself. And it's not that much. Oh, plus we're punching through the previous limits as if they weren't even there. Yeah, we're already past the 440 something meters per second. So we're looking very good, we're doing fine. 
it works we saw the problem we figured it out and uh, we found a solution to it yes the aerodynamics of the craft as it is right now is excellent No problem whatsoever. It's cutting through the atmosphere like a hot butter cuts, uh, like a hot knife cuts the butter. No problems at all. And she flies pretty well as well. More than Mach 5. Mach 520. Waiting a bit for the apoapsis to rise. Or was I waiting for the engines to kick in to switch mode on their own? Can't remember that. It's still our Delta V looks very good. and we don't need much to spend much of it to reach orbit and after the final burn Looking at nearly thirty seven hundred meters per second without using the best approaches. Yep. Everything looks good, everybody's happy. But I wasn't done yet. Oh. So, is that it? You just envelop your engines in fairings and everything is fine? No. I found that later. But take a look here. You can see the engine clusters from the previous craft here. And they work exactly as they were with just one drag vector. This is another craft. and you can see another engine cluster here using a, an engine plate having multiple drag vectors which is normal but take a look at these the rear engine clusters they are they have a mini skirt fairing yet they still have multiple drag vectors so uh, each engine creates drags, drag, even though it is enveloped in a fairing. Why is this happening? In order for us to understand this, we need to take a look at the air breathing engines of the game. Here we are with the rapier. When we See, the center of mass of the rapier, it's in front of it. And that happens with all air-breathing engines. The reason is that what we see is just the exhaust part of the engine. So there is an engine in front of it that we don't.
and uh, this happens in all air breathing engines all of them so but it doesn't happen in closed cycle rocket engines as you can see so in order to um, aerodynamically seal that engine we have to seal all the part that is in front of it which we don't actually see that's why the fairing has to be um, quite a ways in front of what we see as the engine more examples here more engines the same things apply as I said el earlier rocket engines are what you see is what you get air breathing engines is what you see is just the exhaust yeah here's the mammoth see dead center even with this little one the vector engine it's it's correct it's right So now we can understand why the mini skirt fairing didn't work. But what else can work instead of a, of a whole fairing arrangement, which is uh, honestly quite heavy? It's uh, something like it was like something uh, 4.5 tons, if I remember well those two fairings that you saw earlier so let's try uh, something more normal let's call it yeah an engine plate six plus one attachment nodes nodes and uh, I'm doing the exact same thing I'm attaching it but this is the more proper way of attaching an engine yeah I'm also I also want to attach a nuclear engine at the center not very easy I should have done it there there we go so let's try this arrangement for the engine cluster will that work aerodynamically speaking let's see mm, minor adjustments here and there that's just a working title No fairings this time, no fairings at all. So let's see what we're gonna see. And uh, what we do see is that we do have multiple drag vectors, but they're not as big as in the first try they're quite smaller so aerodynamically this is better than uh, the first vehicle and uh, it does accelerate uh, not as good as uh, the fairing version but it does which means it has increased drag but it can punch through it because it's not as big as for the craft to stop accelerating so yeah we are above 400 meters per second and we keep accelerating it uh, works we've punched through the 
dreaded transonic range. Technically speaking, this is a success and this is useful and usable. You can use it. Oh, the, the diagonal uh, lift vectors that you see, now they're horizontal, are because of uh, something that I figured out much later. The engine clusters are not exactly straight. They're not exactly parallel to the main body of the plane they look they look a bit uh, away from the center of the plane I figured that out later and I fixed it that creates a bit more drag yet still the plane works fine Yep. Just fine. Conclusion. It is usable, but with more aerodynamic drag. So we go with the fairing version. This is a later iteration of the same craft with five fairings. Two around the engine clusters, two in front of the engine clusters, and one on the nose. Is it aerodynamic? Yes, it is. Is it a bit too much? Yes, it is. How, aerody how aerodynamic is it? Quite a lot, I'd say. It accelerates as if there is no tomorrow. We just passed the island and we're nearing a thousand meters per second. I'm deliberately keeping it on sea level where the air is thicker. Just to see how much it can go in this thick air. And now you can realize why I call this ship Phoenix. Because once she goes, she definitely looks like one. You can uh, see her from, uh, from the top a bit see exactly what I mean. She looks like a phoenix. And she's still accelerating. At sea level. Yep. That's my phoenix. Alright. Still accelerating at sea level. Mach 4.5 at sea level is not a small feat. And now I'm just letting her climb. 
Yes, she's a fine craft, and uh, she can put uh, easily two orange tanks in orbit. Very easily. Basically, that's it for today's video. I hope you find it useful. And uh, you got a better understanding, understanding about the aerodynamics in Kerbal Space Program. Trying to look for where the drug comes. my phoenix and uh, as simple as she may be she's a fine craft a fine space plane so this is Ted 12 I hope you liked this video and you found it helpful if you did please consider giving it a like and subscribe to my channel thanks again Till the next one, bye.